The news at noon starts right now. And new at noon, a man facing a murder charge after police say he was involved in another man's death in Live Oak over the weekend. Officers tell us the suspect admitted to the shooting, shooting the victim, but said he didn't know how it happened because he had taken drugs. 22 year old Iman Martis Woods was charged with murder. Police say on Sunday they were called to an apartment in Live Oak off of Loop 1604, not far from Pat Booker Road. Officers say they found a man inside an apartment with a gunshot wound to his chest. That man later died at a local hospital. Police were led to Woods after they learned he was renting the apartment where the victim was found. Officers tell us Woods was already behind bars when they located him. He was arrested in Universal City for DWI and failure to stop and give information just minutes after the shooting in Live Oak. Also due at noon, police called to investigate a crash and ended up finding a man with a gunshot wound. The discovery happening on the north side. Police say they were called to the intersection of Moss Rock and Robin Hill Drive for a major accident. Officers tell us they found a 35 year old man in a vehicle with a gunshot wound and possible head injuries. They think he hit his head during the crash. He was pronounced dead at the scene. Police haven't named a suspect. However, they do tell us they are looking for a 33 year old man. A new homeowner is left shocked and with thousands of dollars worth of damages after a fire destroyed a large part of her home. Firefighters were called to the 700 block of Marshall Street around 3 this morning. Crews say the investigation has been handed over to arson. Deborah Bond and her wife were woken up by a jarring alert this morning. I got a call about a little bit after 3 from the neighbor over here. The white and blue home on Marshall Street that she had recently become an owner of was in flames. Fire had a heavy hold on the exterior of the backside and the right uh, backside. So they started hitting from the outside, made an interior attack. In minutes, the fire spread from the first floor near the water heater all the way up to the attic, making it tough for firefighters to put out the flames early this morning. These old buildings, this one was built in 1945, multiple renovations over the year. They had wood, they don't take off wood. So we had to get in there with a couple of chainsaws to open up walls open up ceiling just to get to where the fire was deep seated at. Damages are estimated to be at $60,000. It's in probate right now. It was left in a will to me. Nobody's been living there. We've just been coming and checking on it. Authorities spoke to witnesses at the scene and now Bond must wait for arson investigators to determine what went wrong and if there was foul play. He's not positive exactly what started it yet, but he can see two points of origin and he's pretty sure that it's not accidental. But she's determined to pick up the pieces of the home she inherited. I've always been blessed by God and uh, I believe somehow I'll be able to fix the house. In Bear County, we're still seeing a rise in COVID-19 cases and hospitalizations. Last night, Mayor Ron Nierberg announced 975 more people are now fighting the virus and 11 more people have died. And hospitalizations continue on a steady incline. The city is reporting 1,116 people are hospitalized locally. 314 patients are in intensive care and 170 people are on ventilators. Those long awaited stimulus payments could hit your bank account very soon. The U.S. Treasury Department says direct deposits started going out overnight and they'll begin mailing out paper checks today. Adults who sh should qualify can expect $600 and up to $600 for each qualifying child. The checks are going out as the fight to increase the amount of those stimulus checks hits another roadblock. ABC's Faith Abu Bay has the latest. Those $600 stimulus checks finally on the way to millions of Americans. But the prospect of more of that money coming soon now deadlocked on Capitol Hill. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell blocking Democrats' efforts twice to increase the direct payments to $2,000. Then it will begin a process to bring these three priorities into focus. McConnell instead introducing his own bill filled with President Trump's demands. The proposal includes $2,000 stimulus checks, a committee to investigate election fraud, and repealing protections for social media companies. But the bill might be dead on arrival. While Democrats support the increased stimulus payments, they're calling the unrelated items poison pills. So we can get this done. But Leader McConnell has to get out of the way. The stalemate is also stalling progress on another agenda item, a vote to override President Trump's veto of the annual defense authorization bill. Now it is time for the Senate to step up to the plate. 
and do what the working families of this country overwhelmingly want us to do. But the president dialing up the pressure on his own party to get a deal done, tweeting, unless Republicans have a death wish, they must approve the $2,000 payments ASAP. A growing number of Republicans, including the two GOP senators in that critical Georgia runoff next week, are supporting the president's calls. For now, it's unclear whether the extra stimulus boost will ever come. But many Americans ready to receive the $600 checks coming their way. Right now, I'm not working. And, you know, anything that is out here for us to actually get is well worth it. And President Trump and President-elect Joe Biden will both be in Georgia on Monday. President Trump will be drumming up support for the GOP candidates, while Biden will be campaigning for their Democratic rivals. Faith Abube, ABC News, Washington. Back here at home, HEB has started administrating the COVID-19 vaccine to those who qualify. However, they are still only accepting people under phase 1A of the rollout. We reached out to HEB after some folks who believe they qualify under phase 1B told us they were turned away. According to a statement from the company, some HEB pharmacies have received a Moderna vaccine to help vaccinate our community health care providers. Once, they need, once the need is met within phase one, vaccinations will be given to those who fall into phase 1B. The company says this is in accordance with the Texas Department of Health Services guidelines. And HEB says those who are wanting to get a vaccine will need to make an appointment. Walk-ins will not be accepted. And 2020 through the eyes of KSAT. It's the name of our end of the year special set to air tonight at 7 p.m. right here on KSAT. From COVID-19 to protest, hurricanes, and the election, the year 2020 is one for the record books. Here's a preview of what you can expect. 2020 has been upside down and inside out. 2020 in a new sense. I, I don't even know where to begin. Tonight, we're announcing our stay at home emergency declarations. March Madness has been canceled. I figured there was going to be a lot of glass. Oh, the, and the protesters oh, marched to the Bear County Courthouse, back to SAPD, and now here. They're putting themselves in harm's way. I can't breathe! I have never lived through anything that comes even close to COVID-19. Nobody could have seen this coming. So coming up this half hour, the Spurs are ready to see where they stand when it comes to matching up against the defending champion. A cold front is going to move through San Antonio. That's going to drop temperatures, but our best chances for rain in a long time going to happen overnight tonight. And in some parts of the KSAT 12 viewing area, there is going to be some snow. So a busy forecast. I'll have a look ahead coming up. And big moves dealing with food and parking parking happening at the Pearl in 2021. Max Massey highlights the changes to expect after the break. Have we got deals for you? Welcome to KSATDeals.com. Now, I can't wait to spotlight this next product. It's nostalgia in a box, and I'm seriously considering getting this for my little ones. Create some fun with this retro TV gaming console. Comes with 620 pre-installed games, and it comes with one TV video game console, two hardwired controllers, one audio video cable for TV, one power charger, and one user manual. Now, it's easy to link to your television. You can play games like you did when you were a little one like me. All of this for a crazy low price worth all the fun you'll have while spending more time at home as we all are these days. Now the retail price for this $99, but the game console case at deals price is $39.99. That is a 60% discount. You can get this deal along with many others at caseatdeals.com. If you do not know about the Pearl, it is a unique 22-acre area just north of downtown with green spaces, local restaurants, the Emma Hotel, and small businesses. It is a popular destination here in the Alamo City, and as Max Massey shows us, there are more attractions on the way for 2021.
it's easy to kind of forget how vibrant the growth of our city and our region is. San Antonio is projected to become, move from being the seventh largest city in the nation to the sixth largest city in the nation in 2021. In anticipation of more and more people moving to San Antonio, the Pearl is making big changes. We're going to be highlighting the five things you can expect in 2021. Not only are they bringing in new restaurants, but they're also making architectural changes, turning a parking lot into a green space. The park is set to open by next December, and you may ask, what about parking? Well, don't worry, there's a new complex called the Oxbow, which brings in 900 new parking spots. So that will be used mostly during the day and during the week by employees, but on the weekends and at night when things get really busy with people visiting Pearl, that will be parking that'll be available. And one of the reasons for the new parking is the addition of new restaurants. Brasserie Mont Chouchou, which is right in front of Hotel Emma, and they've been open a couple of weeks and it's just been so exciting to see everybody's response. Also, Best Quality Daughter opened on Mueller and that's really been exciting as well. And that's not all. So we'll be opening four new restaurants next year. If you don't come here for the green spaces or the restaurants, one of the staples of the Pearl is the farmer's market. And soon there's going to be new merchandise to help out our local vendors. And for the first time this year, we've created um, in partnership with some of our farmer's market vendors, Pearl products. Um, so we've done, it's actually been really encouraging. People have loved these holiday gift boxes that we've done that have our Pearl um, cranberry, uh, chutney, our tomato chutney, and our uh, jalapeno jelly. This might seem like a lot, but Elizabeth tells me there is so much room to grow. She adds that the Pearl has a commitment to small businesses, and she wants to see them shine. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. Speaking of shining, the sun's not going to be shining much <laughs> over the next uh, ooh, 24 hours, 48 hours. Yeah, we, there. you know, we have seen some peaks of sunshine out there, but it's been a pretty gray day for us. And there's there are some areas of showers, but the big weather headlines that we'll talk about in the full forecast. First of all, today, cloudy, a few storms will be out there this afternoon, but overnight, that's when San Antonio is going to get some good, healthy rain. It'll be cold, but it'll be rain. And tomorrow for the Rio Grande and parts of the hill country, wintry mix and snowfall is possible. A lot to unpack in the forecast. I'll have a look at that coming up. This SA Salutes Holiday Greeting is brought to you by Texas Med Clinic. On behalf of all of the staff at Texas Med Clinic in New Braunfels, we'd like to wish everyone a safe and happy holiday season. Happy, happy holidays! holidays. <laughs> Look, you're headed out. Late, late, late tonight or early, early, early in the morning. Some muck lux, glasses, maybe a parka. <laughs> Hug boots for you, David. <laughs> it's going to be cold tomorrow morning. Yeah. In fact, we're seeing the front move through areas in KSAT 12 viewing areas right now. The biggest weather story, though, for us around San Antonio is how much rain we're going to get out of this system. It has been bone dry this December. We've only seen five hundredths of an inch of rainfall. And when all is said and done by tomorrow evening, a lot of backyards around San Antonio will have picked up an inch, inch and a half of rain, even more rainfall out east toward Houston and College Station up to three inches of rainfall out there. And I know there's been a lot of buzz about will it snow in San Antonio? The short answer is no, it's it's not going to snow in San Antonio, but it will snow in some areas out toward Del Rio potentially in Rock Springs and across parts of the Hill Country. So a lot to talk about in the forecast right now outside. It's cloudy. It's 71 degrees. There are streamer showers out there. Here's a look at the radar. You can see those showers moving from south to north. Really no thunder uh, to talk about at the moment, but areas east of San Antonio, Gonzalez, even Seguin, New Braunfels have the potential to see some thunderstorms uh, later on this afternoon as that front moves through uh, those areas. Again, some streamer showers near Cuero, Goliad, Carn City, Nixon. Smiley Gonzalez just moving from south to north in Guadalupe County, just south of I-10 there near Seguin uh, and uh, close to New Braunfels in Comal County, seeing some uh, light rain as well. Uh, same story out toward Bandera, Kerrville and Bernie at the moment. It's fairly quiet around San Antonio at the moment, but again, Here's the front. Can you spot it? It's very obvious. It's 71 here in San Antonio, but 48 in Fredericksburg, 45 in Rock Springs, even Kerrville close to 60 degrees now and 58 in Del Rio. Wider view here will draw on that cold front. There it is. It's in the 30s in the panhandle of Texas and freezing uh, near Alpine at the moment. And notice that behind this front, we've still got a lot of precipitation going on. And this is the key. The front is not 
the, the rainmaker here. The rainmaker is this big upper level low pressure system kind of right over parts of the Sierra Madres right now. And this is going to push on off to the east and throughout the night tonight, there's going to be areas of widespread cold rain. Let's take you through the future cast again. Today, the rest of the day today, 30 40% chance for scattered showers and a few storms. But tonight, watch what happens. Rain becomes more widespread. This is overnight tonight into tomorrow morning. When you wake up tomorrow morning in San Antonio, it'll be cold and it'll be rainy. Uh, that upper level low is going to move across. Uh, areas just to the south of San Antonio by tomorrow morning. This is 6 a.m. You can see just how much rainfall will be around the area. And at that time, the rain will probably be turning into a wintry mix for some places closer to Del Rio and then eventually into snow out toward Del Rio, Rock Springs and even areas like Kerrville have a small potential to see a wintry mix as well. This is tomorrow afternoon. Notice how the rain starts to end around San Antonio tomorrow afternoon and by the evening tomorrow tomorrow. It's going to be nice and clear outside by about midnight when we ring in the new year. This is 5 p.m. Again, we could still see some areas of snowfall out near Real uh, County and Kerr County and even into Gillespie County as well. But look at that right around 10 p.m. Things are going to clear out for us and it's going to be pretty cold and clear uh, to ring in 2021. So just to really emphasize, this is a look at the chance of snow, all rain in San Antonio, but out toward Del Rio, Rock Springs, Lakey, even Yavaldi and Eagle Pass, there's a decent chance to see a few flakes, but the areas of accumulation are going to be in this purple area here where about one to three inches of snow will be possible. Pretty cool to see snow out in Del Rio tomorrow. That's going to be really interesting. Last time Del Rio saw any snowfall was in 2012, and uh, it would be really interesting if they could get some good snow. So again, tomorrow here in San Antonio, all rain for us. Widespread rain in the morning, 38 degrees to start the day, so it's going to be cold. And then temperatures are not going to recover that much. We may get up to about 45. It'll be windy with winds from the north gusting up to 30 miles per hour and then by the evening skies will clear we will dip into the 30s. So if you have plans to celebrate New Year's Eve and ring in the new year, it's going to be cold outside. I don't know about you, but I'll be inside uh, when we ring in the new year. And speaking of uh, the new year, Friday, first day of the year, freezing start, comfortable afternoon sunshine for the weekend. So nice. Ugg boots, rain boots. And then I guess tomorrow, the best thing, give yourself a little extra time to get to work. Yeah, I think that's probably good because of the, the rain that'll be out there. But flooding is not really a concern because it's been so dry. All right. Thank you. Thank you so to come, the Longhorns finishing up the season with a nice win in the Alamo Bowl. And the Spurs are looking to start a home stretch with a nice win over the Lakers. Would be a nice win, wouldn't it? And the Texas Longhorns finishing up this weird or unique season with a huge Alamo Bowl win last night over Colorado in the Dome. We go to the first quarter. Texas up 7 up. He's on Johnson with a handoff. Hits that hole, and then there he goes. They finally run him down right around the 25-yard line, 50 yards later. He rushed for 183 yards, the most for a Longhorn freshman in a bowl game. That set up this. They screened to Robinson for the score. And how about little Texas defense against the Buffaloes last night? Alfred Collins using that big mitt to bring in the interception at the line of scrimmage. Did you see that? Yeah, pass barely got out of the quarterback's hand. Here it is, another look at it for you in slow motion. Wow. Love that defense from the Longhorns last night. Hey, go to the third. Casey Thompson got the play because of a shoulder injury to Ellinger. He throws this pass to Joshua Moore for a touchdown. Well, first he threw that pass to Robinson again, and that's down the sidelines. Now comes the Joshua Moore pass. A little fake. That's your future right there, Longhorn fans. Blake Thompson, four TD passes in the second half alone. The Longhorns head to the offseason with a 55-23 bowl win. All right, there's that final for you. Hey, the Spurs getting ready to take on the Lakers tonight to start a tough three-game homestand. As of yesterday, the Lakers have listed their star player, LeBron James, as questionable for the big showdown tonight against the Spurs because of a left ankle sprain. LeBron did play Monday night in the Lakers' 115-107 loss to the Blazers. He scored 29 points in 36 minutes of action, so maybe no LeBron. Of course, no fans for a while. Remember, Monday, the Spurs announced that the fans would not be allowed at the AT&T Center as planned this Friday when the Spurs 
We're scheduled to host the Lakers again, all because of an increase in coronavirus cases. So what does DeMar DeRozan think of that decision? Health and safety is the, is the most important thing. You know, um, if we want things to get back to being regular um, sooner, we got to, you know, be disciplined and understand we got to take care of what we need to take care of now. And that's yourself, your family, and doing whatever it takes, you know, to stop the spread. If you got to keep your kids and family occupied within the household as best as you can. You know, I know it's tough times. I know it's hard. You know, we got to sit still for a second. Right after yesterday's workout, we also found out from DeJounte Murray what LeBron told him when he was drafted by the Spurs in 2016. LeBron just been nothing but great to me as far as off the floor, on the floor, and, you know, just trying to see me grow and be better. Uh, like a draft night told me I was going to, you know, the best organization in the NBA. Uh, and he's just been by my side supporting me, and I try to support the same. I mean, that's LeBron James, but, you know, love is love and support is always what people need at the end of the day. Yeah, but he's your enemy tonight. Come on, no love on the court tonight, man. Come on, get after him. Lakers and Spurs, tip-off 7.30, AT&T Center. We'll have highlights for you tonight on The Night Beat. Lots of love. Oh, no, no love on the court. Come on. <laughs> and a new hope just as 2020 comes to an end. Britain has now authorized another COVID-19 vaccine. Why this vaccine could be rolled out much more quickly. And Britain has authorized use of a second COVID-19 vaccine, becoming the first country to greenlight an easy-to-handle shot. As ABC's Jane Longman reports, developers hope this will become the vaccine for the world. A new hope just before the end of a very difficult year. Britain has now authorized the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine. It doesn't need to be kept at super low temperatures like the Pfizer vaccine. So the idea is that it could be rolled out much, much more quickly. And there's a change to vaccine strategy here in the UK. Britain will now vaccinate as many people as possible with the first shot and allow up to three months to pass before the second is administered. Health services want to get some level of protection for millions of people as soon as they possibly can. But all this, of course, as Britain is in the middle of a major coronavirus surge, reporting more than 53,000 cases on Tuesday alone. That was a new record. S despite vaccine rollout, there's extreme concern here over what officials are calling unprecedented levels of infection. And that's possibly down to this new mutation, which is so much more infectious. The new surge essentially cancelled Christmas and with more restrictions ahead, people are being warned ahead of the new year that they must stay at home if this country is to avoid catastrophe. James Longman, ABC News in London. In the meantime, the U.S. reported 3,725 COVID-19 related deaths yesterday, breaking the previous single day total of 3,656 set back on December 16th. Meanwhile, Colorado is reporting the first known case in the U.S. of the new U.K. variant of the virus. Health officials say the patient, a man who's in his 20s with no travel history, is recovering in isolation. This as the virus continues to affect younger patients. Overnight, Louisiana Congressman-elect Luke Letlow died from COVID at just 41 years old. He tested positive on December 18th and died just 10 days later. What's surprising also are patients who are coming in in their 30s and 40s who are truly symptomatic and requiring oxygen. Now, the CDC says this new variant of COVID-19 could be far more contagious. However, new research finds the variant is more deadly and experts believe the vaccine will likely be effective against it. And Yemeni officials say an explosion hit the airport in a southern city shortly before a plane carrying the newly formed cabinet landed there. The source of the blast on Wednesday wasn't immediately clear. No one on the board, the no one on board the government plane was hurt, but initial reports said at least four people at the airport were killed. The ministers were returning after being sworn in last week as part of a reshuffle following a deal meant to mend rifts with southern separatists. Outside with live cam, this is when the weather department really gets excited. Oh, and yeah. they got all kinds of stuff to talk about. Snow chasing. Well, uh, snow chasing out west. <laughs> Way out west. <laughs> Way out west. Uh, you know, out toward Del Rio and into Edwards County, there is the possibility for snow. But the big weather story that we've been talking about here is healthy, much needed rain. Now, right now, only a few showers are peppering the radar at the moment. We've got some uh, streamer showers moving from south to north across the area over the coastal plain, out toward Carn City and 
down near Goliad. Some of those showers are pushing up north into Nixon, Smiley area, Gonzales, Hallettsville, even seeing a shower and in Guadalupe County near Seguin. You can see just to the west of there along I-10, a good shower there as well toward New Braunfels, just to the south of uh, I-35. And a neighborhood view here uh, around San Antonio along 281 Stone Oak, you're about to get a quick splash and dash shower and Timberwood Boulevard Park, uh, Timberwood Park and Boulevard, pardon me, are also getting splash and dash showers. It's a similar story for Bandera, Kerrville, Sisterdale. Uh, so throughout the rest of the day, this is the kind of rain that we could see in the afternoon. But by late tonight, we are going to get a lot of rainfall around San Antonio. A cold front is currently pushing through the KSAT 12 viewing area. 21, 20 degree difference from Kerrville, which is in the 50s to us here in San Antonio. And it's in the 40s in Fredericksburg and Rock Springs. And again, late tonight, that's when the rain is really going to start to pick up. We'll only see rain here in San Antonio, but in some places like Del Rio uh, and uh, Valverde County, as well as Edwards, Real, Kerr and Gillespie County, a winter storm watch is actually going to be in effect through tomorrow where one to three inches of snow are possible. So I'll be back to show you the future cast and what that means for us here in San Antonio as far as rainfall totals go in just a few minutes. Thank you, Sarah. It happened after Thanksgiving, Labor Day, and even after Halloween, a surge in COVID-19 cases across the country. And now public health experts are bracing for another increase in cases through the new year and even beyond. Sarah Costa explains how to ring in 2021 more safely. Over the last week, more than 7.1 million people were screened at TSA checkpoints despite CDC warnings to stay home for the holidays. We could be rolling into February with the events of Christmas still impacting us, uh, even with this vaccine coming out. Now the concern has turned toward New Year's. The CDC says the safest way to celebrate is at home with people who you live with or virtually with friends and family. The agency says travel and gatherings with those who don't live with you can increase your chances of getting and spreading COVID-19 or the flu. If you host a celebration or go to one, talk before gathering to set expectations. Keep celebrations outdoors if possible. If indoors, open windows and doors and clean and disinfect frequently touched surfaces. Have guests bring their own food, drinks, plates, cups, and utensils. Keep background music volume low so guests don't need to shout, which may lessen airborne particles. Use single-use options like condiment packets and limit the number of guests. Some health experts suggest less than 10 people and to get a COVID test beforehand. Your level of protection is as strong as your weakest link, and if you're a weak link, then the, the, the virus is going to spread. Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. And think you have good taste in music, but others tend to disagree. Now you can validate your style or find out if it's totally cringeworthy thanks to a new bot. Details after the break. Never, never miss a story. Watch live or when you want. San Antonio's latest news and weather. Streaming free on KSAT TV. This is your daily tech and business briefing from Cheddar. Apple quietly launching a one-on-one -on -one mentorship program aimed at first-generation college students. The mentors will be able to provide students with resources and opportunities to fuel their professional growth. Now, in order to apply, you have to be a college freshman or a sophomore majoring in finance, economics, or accounting. The program will also offer students a chance for internships and job shadowing. Meanwhile, NFL representatives are now debunking a false headline that claimed that NFL player Russell Okung was receiving his full salary in Bitcoin. The report came after the Panthers star sent out several tweets endorsing a company called Strike, which could convert a percentage of your paycheck into Bitcoin. And Dunkin' is adding an extra jolt of caffeine to their drinks just ahead of the new year. The coffee chain brewing up a new blend of coffee with 20% more caffeine than their classic hot and iced coffee. The extra charged coffee will be available for a limited time starting Wednesday through January 26th. It'll only set you back $2. And the Chichetter Business and Tech Update. I'm Baker Machado, coming to you from Cheddar Studios in Lower Manhattan.
All right, if your friends often trash your taste in music, here's a change of pace. Why not let an AI bot read you like a book? You have to have thick skin or a sense of humor. You've probably seen this on the internet. It's an AI that's billing itself as sophisticated. It was created by the digital publication Pudding. It's called How Bad Is Your Spotify? You do have to give it permission to access your account, so have your login ready. Then it will analyze your choices and offer thoughts on your musical taste and it does it in just seconds. If the bot sees too much music from a certain artist, it will promptly let you know. It let me that I let it let me know that I listen to too much Casey Musgraves. It will also react to some of your most played music asking you if you're okay and label your taste in music with category categories like you're trying too hard or embarrassing. Many people are starting to share their how bad is your Spotify results on social media, even if they get roasted in the process. And boy, <laughs> was I roasted. That's funny. Too much Casey Musgraves, yes, right? Yes. Like I care what a bot thinks about my choice in music. But it's funny. It's funny. It's a joke. It's, it's supposed to be funny. Yeah. What what, do you, what would your taste in music be, David? My taste in music? Yeah. Oh, it's, I got wide variety. Country and <laughs> Western, oldies but goodies, 80s, 90s. I respect Pop. all of that. Ooh. Yeah. All right. Take a look at temperatures right now. Down to 45 in Rock Springs, 51 in Kerrville. Still 71 here in San Antonio. A cold front is moving through. There are a few streamer showers out there, but heavier rain is expected late tonight and into tomorrow and we need the rain the aquifer no change in the aquifer level but we're still below average by almost four feet and the rain is probably going to help to wash out some of the mountain cedar today mountain cedar is very high past 15,000 this is the highest it's been so far this season and of course we'll also talk about in the forecast the chance for snow out west Rain, 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 rain. We know we need the rain. Yeah, too. don't go you away, know, rain, please. Because the firework stands are open, especially like when you cross the county line. There's a lot of them up 281 and up 35. Well, and you know what? The good news is the rain will be over by the time we ring in the new year. So although I'm it'll more worried about the dry, though, than the rain. You know? Yeah, we, we absolutely need the rain. Yeah. We have been bone dry not only this month, but this year. We're about a foot of a of a rain of deficit in San Antonio. So we need the rain and overnight tonight through tomorrow. We should get in areas around San Antonio at least an inch to an inch and a half of rainfall, even more out to the east. Uh, so that's the big weather story. The big weather story is that we are going to get some much needed rain and it's going to be cold rain because of a cold front moving through. The other part of the weather story is that areas like Del Rio, Rock Springs, uh, and parts of Real County, even out to Kerrville, have the potential for some snow uh, as we start the day tomorrow and go throughout the day tomorrow as well. Right now outside, it's 70 degrees and it's cloudy in San Antonio and temperatures are falling. We've also got streamer showers out there. No real lightning to speak of at the moment, uh, but th thunder could be a possibility, especially east of San Antonio throughout the remainder of the day. Some showers along the coastal plains, so Carnes uh, County, eastern Carnes Carnes County, north of Goliad, just to the east of Quero, Nixon Smiley area, Floresville, you're about to get a passing streamer shower there, and near Hallettsville as well. Guadalupe County, seeing some of these streamer showers up to New Braunfels, a few uh, splash and dash showers as well out near Luling. And then around San Antonio, you can see that we've got one shower inside Loop 410 there, just to the east of downtown San Antonio, and up near Stone Oak. Some other showers out toward Kerrville, where the front has already moved through, uh, and near Bandera as well. So let's go ahead and take a look at temperatures here. Very clearly you can see where the front is. 45 in Rock Springs, 51 in Kerrville, but it's 20 degrees warmer here in San Antonio. So the front is right on our doorstep in the Alamo City. It'll probably be moving through here within the next two, two and a half hours. And behind it, some pretty cold air. You know, it's uh, 32 in Alpine, 34 in Midland, uh, 39 in Abilene. But the real rainmaker is not this cold front because as you can see, it's raining behind the cold front. The real rainmaker is this big upper level low pressure system. And this big upper level low pressure system is gonna move east throughout the rest of the day today. And it'll be close to San Antonio overnight tonight and into tomorrow. And so our best chances for rain in San Antonio are overnight tonight and early tomorrow morning uh, throughout the morning as well. Future cast shows that we could just still have a few isolated to scattered 
scattered showers, maybe a few rumbles of thunder through tonight, even after that front has already moved through. But in the overnight hours, that's when rain really starts to be widespread. This is a look at 3 a.m. tomorrow morning, and you can see just about everybody has a really great chance to see some widespread rainfall. By the start of the day tomorrow, again, we'll have cold rain in San Antonio. It's going to be a pretty messy morning commute tomorrow morning. But out to the west, we'll start to see this rain change over to snowfall. So areas near Del Rio, and up into Rock Springs are going to have a good chance for some snow, especially the northern part of Val Verde County. Uh, you know, Del Rio is really going to be on that edge, but I do think that they are going to get uh, some snowfall tomorrow. And then this is tomorrow right at about five. Notice that the rain has ended in San Antonio by about five but there still could be a few flakes left off over in the hill country. So that's when areas like Kerrville have a chance to see some flakes. Uh, but by midnight, it's going to be clearing in San Antonio and it is going to be cold. All rain, I just want to emphasize this, all rain in San Antonio tonight and into tomorrow. It's just not going to be cold enough to see snowfall in San Antonio. And that's okay, we need the rain. But out to the west toward Del Rio, Eagle Pass, uh, Lakey, Uvalde, and Rock Springs, those are the areas that have the best chance for uh, snow. And real accumulations of one to three inches are possible, especially for northern Val Verde County out there. So tomorrow, just a reminder, all rain, waking up at 38 degrees with areas of widespread rainfall. Right around noon, we'll still have some lingering showers because of the cloud cover. We're only going to be in the 40s tomorrow. High temperature of 45 degrees, gusts up to 30 miles per hour uh, from the north. So it's going to be breezy too. And then by the evening, it'll be nice and chilly. 39 degrees by 9, but by the time we ring in the new year, we'll probably be uh, right at about 37. And again, clear skies as we head into the first day of 2021. And I say goodbye to 2020. All right, we'll start off freezing on New Year's Day, 60 degrees for the high and sunshine. Yes, David. I have a weather question. Yes, sir. Wind and rain at the same time, like horizontal rain or wind following all the rain? Um, it'll be windy with the rain, but it won't oh. necessarily be horizontal rain. Well, 30 uh, miles an hour. A gust every now okay. and then up to 30. Well, that's, you know, still a lot of wind and rain. It'll be time. windy and rainy and miserable. So tonight. that makes it even colder. Yeah. It's like the best wind day to and, sleep in. Right. Tomorrow. I think yeah. so. Be pretty good for some. Yeah, we work. <laughs> still coming up. Hey, you listen up, foodies. Ooh, we've been waiting for this show. A new reality food competition covered in Netflix where amateur chefs actually give leftovers a makeover. Preview, still ahead. And a new movie streaming on Amazon features jazz as part of the story. We'll take a look after the break. Tell me about this new boy at the store. Hey, what's your favorite song on this? You don't know what love is. Tessa Thompson and Namdi Asamoah star in the drama Sylvie's Love. My band's playing tonight at nine if you want to come. Sylvie is a, a young, aspiring television producer, which is, you know, not for nothing, not an easy thing to be in the in the 50s. And she meets a young man named Robert, and and uh, he's arguably, quite possibly, the right person, but at the wrong time. And so you get to see them on this journey to coming together, falling apart, and maybe coming together again. He's extraordinary. Robert is this aspiring musician, uh, tenor saxophonist. He wants to be the next John Coltrane. It's the only thing he can think about is his music, um, morning, noon, night. And then he walks into a record store to get a, a, an album, and he's sort of hit with this dart from Cupid. Robert. Sylvie? What are you doing in New York? Recording an album. There are certain people in your life who you meet, and no matter how much time has passed by, they always stay present in your mind. And when you reconnect with them, it's almost like no time has gone by. You just pick right back up where you left off. Life's too short to waste time on things you don't absolutely love. But how do you know if you love something absolutely? I guess when it's the only thing that matters. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. A new Netflix cooking show has chefs making meals out of leftovers. That leftover show features skilled cooks who compete over two rounds, creating new dishes out of leftovers. Take a look. 
cannot believe you turned your tamale into the gnocchi. The cook with the best dishes goes home with $10,000. Oh, we about to go on a journey with this. Time is coming down to the wire. In four, <laughs> three, two, one. Let's eat. Woo! Well done. Home chefs are finding delicious ways to give old leftovers new life. I'm good at transforming dishes from one thing into another. I love to throw away food. All is fair in love and leftovers. I have never in my whole life heard of anybody having ice cream with coffee and duff. This is sophisticated. This is on a different level. Flavor-wise, it's so good. On a different level indeed. The first episode was released on Netflix today. It does look a little sophisticated, doesn't it? I, a tamal into, what is it, Noki? Oh. Mm. Hey, SA Live is sophisticated. They're bringing the party to you just in time for your New Year's Eve at home. They have cocktail ideas, do-it-yourself noisemakers, places to let off a little steam, and David Elder, guess what? He tries a monster three-pound oh burger. God. All goodness. right, here's Mike and Fiona. That's <laughs> yes, it is New Year's Eve Eve. The penultimate day of the year. Uh, yes, and we are going to be getting you ready for New Year's Eve. And it's the big party, of course, and, you know, it does take a lot of planning there because a lot of people like to make a lot of noise, and we're going to be doing something. And our favorite person to ring out the olden ring in the new with, Adina Anderson, is here. What are we making? Well, these are really quick and simple noisemakers. You just take popsicle sticks or whatever you have around the house, cardboard, whatever, and then paint it with the deco art paint, and then you have some glitter as well, and then just hot glue or use craft glue to get some little bells on there. It's simple, it's fun, the kids are going to love making this, and everybody will have a blast saying goodbye to 2020! And Good riddance, more like. That's right. We are also going to, because New Year's Eve sometimes needs a little bit of bubbly and Just a little libation. Yes. So, uh, what do you call that drink? Besides this is get a rid of cranberry ginger vodka cocktail. Oh, wow. A sparkle Ooh. cocktail, we'll call it that. The sparkle cocktail. The sparkle cocktail. <laughs> and that looks like something that you could make for the grown-ups as well as the kids. By you could without taking...